So yeah, just to give you some background, um, I'm the co-founder and CEO of Koyeb. I basically spent the last decade building cloud service providers uh, in Europe mostly. So I started uh, with uh, some engineering at a cloud service provider called Outscale. Uh, in 2011, we were kind of trying to bring the feature of AWS to the, to the uh, French and European markets. Um, we sp I spent six years building another cloud service provider called Scaleway. And in 2020, um, I started uh, Koyeb with my two co-founders. Um, and basically, I'm expecting to spend the, the upcoming decade building other cloud service providers because I tend to apparently do that. Um, to uh, maybe to, to uh, know a little bit more uh, who is in the audience, I would like to ask you uh, who has already set up a service mesh in production. Is that the case for everyone? Or okay, so we have a few people, but not everybody. Um, I, I saw a dozen of people uh, for the people who are following from remotely. Um, and who has a network engineering background, maybe? Not more, actually even lesser, it's five people. Because so, from my perspective, like uh, service mesh are, are kind of uh, uh, the modern network engineering, uh, I would say. And we'll go into a little bit of how we implemented it uh, at Koyeb and what it encompasses uh, and what it also brings to, uh, to the user. To uh, give you some context on what we are doing, so at Koyeb, we are basically a, a, a cloud service provider, and we are providing a, a completely managed platform. And we basically allow developers to deploy full stack application in minutes. Um, and we do that in a way where we basically don't want you to learn anything specific to the cloud provider. So we don't want you to learn anything specific to our own platform. Um, and we take care of both the, we take care of basically everything infrastructure. So you can deploy both container and uh, native code, in which case we will, case we will build uh, the application for you and deploy it in production. And uh, coming back to our service mesh subject, uh, we also completely abstract the networking part and the service mesh. So from our wide perspective, that's what it looks like. So we have this Koyeb serverless platform, uh, which abstracts several different functions. We abstract both cloud providers, orchestration, continuous integration, continuous delivery, networking um, with both a global component and a service mesh, and also some monitoring and storage. And today, obviously, we will focus on, on two parts. So one is the service mesh, and the other one is the global part, um, and how we basically deploy globally. Um, the key question we will try to answer is how are requests processed when you deploy an application on, on, on Koyeb? Um, as mentioned, we have two different components. We have a global component because we are uh, providing a platform where you have 250 edge locations built in and uh, 25 core locations. So that's the global part. Uh, and the second part is the service mesh part, where, which deals with the load balancing part, uh, with a completely, which provides a completely encrypted network to the end user, and also provides service discovery. From, so as I mentioned, from our perspective, uh, the goal was to provide a completely zero configuration deployment option um, of services, and we want that to be easily in multiple regions, so we want uh, developers to be able to deploy in two or, or 20 locations without having to think about how to make them say, as different microservices um, communicate together. So uh, the first goal is uh, to have multi-region services um, and to provide uh, completely transparent inter- and intra-region networking. And obviously, this needs to be completely secured. So there is two components in that. So one is everything needs to be encrypted, because we are also running uh, um, across the internet. Um, and we want to be also completely multi-tenant, because we are um, a cloud service provider. So we have multiple customers on the same machines, uh, which 
we'll see bring some challenges because not, not all uh, technologies are designed for this. Uh, and with some scale in mind on the multi tenancy side. Um, and the, the last part we're bringing is the edge acceleration. Uh, to make it more concrete, I will just give you a, a short demo, which is a pre recorded demo um, uh, on how we deploy our next year service um, in Paris on Koyeb uh, and what it looks like. And it works. Uh, so, here we're basically deploying an application which is called Hello, I think. Uh, it's going to be deployed from GitHub, so uh, it's a demo application we provide. It's going to build automatically. We can select how many machines are running, which size of machines we are using, uh, in which location it's going to run. Um, and that's where the magic happens, uh, because so we are taking care of the build process, and we automatically provision uh, are completely ready to use service mesh. So you have, you have at the top a public URL, uh, which is TLS encrypted by, by default. You can add uh, your own custom domains later if you want. Uh, and you also have a, a private domain which is ready to use. So if you deploy multiple services, they will be able to communicate together, as we'll see uh, in a minute. Um, so the build succeeded, which is a, a good news, uh, because it's a pre-recorded demo. Uh, and uh, it's going basically so, and that's the demo you'll see. So you see uh, uh, through which edge location uh, it's going and on which core location it's ending. Uh, and it's Paris in Paris because it was recorded in Paris yesterday. So you can use a test. So if you go to demo-koyeb.koyeb.app, and not.com, uh, you'll learn on, on this demo app, uh, application. Um, and that's what I, what I got yesterday when I landed. Um, so actually, uh, and that's uh, where the, the internet magic happens and the BGP magic happens. You might not go through the same edge, exact edge location. So yesterday night, I was going through Madrid. Uh, today, this morning in the cab, I was going through Marseille. Well, so that's uh, another story. I, I will not focus deeply on, on how BGP works, but it's mostly business negotiation, uh, which don't provide always the, the best latency. Um, and the question we will try to answer is how we go through the, to this app and how we will reach it. So the first step um, is basically uh, the edge. So we basically, when you type the URL, you have the DNS resolution, which is going to return you three different unicasted IPs. Uh, your browser is going to uh, um, use the first one. And wherever you are in the world, it's going to be always the same three IPs. So that's BGP uh, and BGP unicasted, who is uh, doing that. Uh, and uh, in this schema, you have like a user in Valencia and a user in New York City. So you, the user in Valencia is going to go to the nearest ad location, which might be Madrid or uh, Marseille, depending on peering agreements mainly. Uh, but it's supposed to be kind of the nearest geographically, hopefully. Uh, and the second user is going to go through, uh, to, through New York City. And what it brings is basically the TLS connection is going to be terminated at the edge. Uh, you will be able to provide HTTP3 for all people uh, who have browsers who support it, um, and you will get also caching at the edge. The second step um, is our edge network is always going to route you to the nearest core location. Um, where your service is actually running. So, sorry, not where your service is actually running, so it's the nearest core location, uh, before routing you to the um, core location where your service is actually um, running. So remember, we deployed the service in Paris. So if you are in uh, New York, you're going to go through the edge location uh, in New York, then to, through the core location in New York, and then to Paris, uh, because th that's We'll see how it works uh, behind the scene, but that's the way we implemented the mesh. Um, and to go to this core location where we have the, the complete service mesh running, um, I will 
just I've give you a few uh, more details on the global context of the technological stack we are using. So we are using uh, for the orchestration side, Nomad. Um, so we are, uh, and our technology who is basically uh, uh, communicating with all these components. Um, Fire, Firecracker for the virtualization side and, and to deploy micro VMs. It's running on top of VAML servers. And for the networking side, we are using um, Kuma and Voice who are dealing with the service mesh and, and discovery. So what Kuma and Envoy basically bring to us is that they provide completely uh, fully automated uh, service deployment. We get all the basics which you'd expect uh, as an as a end user. So you get a secure private connection. You don't need to think about encryption between your different services. You get completely automated DNS provisioning for your internal services, uh, layer 4, layer 7 load balancing, and it's really completely transparent as, a, as an end user. So we have all this on each core location. We have the stack running, so it's, it looks like this. Uh, you have like uh, Bernal servers, uh, the hypervisors uh, with a, a, a core OS um, and micro VMs uh, on top of the hypervisors, and the container you deployed are running inside of the micro VMs. Uh, so pretty, that's pretty standard uh, in terms of service mesh deployments. Um, and Kuma is basically taking care of all the service mesh control plane. So what it does, it's going to broadcast the configuration to all instances of um, of Kuma which are running, which are embedding Envoy uh, technically, and it's broadcasting the configuration. It's not broadcasting it, but it's distributing the configuration where it needs it to be. So on, on the control plane side, you have Kuma, who is dealing with all this configuration. And on the data plane side, you have the Envoy, which are embedded into managed by Kuma. Um, and that's, uh, the key, that's the key thing. And so going back to our service, which is located in Paris, uh, the question is, where does it go through? So we uh, stopped uh, at the edge earlier, and we said like it was going to the nearest core location. Then we have two components in the uh, what we call the data pass. Uh, the first one is, um, and it's both of these components are not standard actually to uh, um, to Kuma. Uh, so it's uh, things we had to uh, add up. Um, the first one is uh, what we call the GLB, so it's a global load balancer which is going to uh, identify where the in which core location the service is running. So if you landed in, in, uh, in New York, this is the component which is going to tell you uh, your services in Paris and it's going to route the traffic to Paris. And then we have a second component, which is the ingress gateway, and it's going to identify on which exact machine in the core location the service is running. Um, and actually, I, I, I'm t I was told that the uh, ingress gateway component is something which came up pre pretty recently in Kuma. So we are not using it because we, uh, we had to, um, uh, we needed it earlier uh, and it was not yet released. Uh, so we have our own uh, implementation which is dealing with uh, uh, multiple customers and multiple meshes. So um, that's um, um, an overview of the whole database. So on the left, you have the edge servers, uh, which are connecting with MTLS to the uh, GLB, which is located in the core location. So that's a scenar scenario where you land directly on the right core location. Uh, the GAB is going to uh, send it to the ingress gateway in the same location, and the ingress gateway is going to route the traffic to the right um, sidecar uh, where actually your micro VM is running aside. If we go to um, the scenario where you have two services in the same location, so uh, in Paris, uh, in this case, we will, uh, we, uh, the, the use case is you have a, a web application and you have an authentication service. So there are both containers. So the authentication service could be a, a Rust service, for instance. Um, and uh, what it brings is basically it's going to provision completely automated DNS 
uh, provisioning and it's also co going to bring you native layer for load balancing and as an end user, as a developer, you, you can do a, a curl on OS, uh, that that's 3000 and it's going to be completely uh, transparent for you. So your web service is going to be able to reach the OAT microservices without having to, uh, to deal with any of the complexity. So in this case, uh, it's, it's pretty simple, like the data pass uh, for communication uh, in a, inside of a region is going to be direct. So it's not going to go through another component, it's going to go from, the, from each service card to the second one. Um, and if you're basically in a scenario where you're deploying across multiple regions, um, there is a two over there. I'm not sure what it means. I have two minutes left, maybe. Uh, so, um, what I was going to say, like, if, if we are deploying these two services in different regions, um, it's going to rely on another component, which is called the zone ingress. Uh, which is uh, actually pretty similar to uh, the ingress gateway we had earlier, uh, but it's for inter-region. So it, it cannot go directly to because it cannot go directly to the sidecar of the uh, located in New York. It's going to go through the zone ingress, which is located in New York, before reaching the right sidecar uh, in New York. When we uh, built this platform, we had to choose the right technologies, and we had two key requirements, uh, which were mostly filled by uh, Kuma at the time. Um, the first one is multi-tenancy, um, and we rely on open source technology, uh, so the only one which, has a which was able to provide this was uh, Kuma and the multi-zone factor. Um, so that's why we ended up with, uh, with basically Kuma. Uh, we still have uh, uh, several challenges and limitations with, um, um, with this technology. So one is multi-tenancy scaling. We have like about uh, 3,000 different service mesh already and um, because each customer has uh, his own service mesh. Uh, that's one key point of uh, our implementation. And basically, when you add up latency uh, in the current implementation, it's going to, when you add up um, meshes, sorry, it's going to add up latency. So we uh, ended up having like uh, sidecars who, who were uh, taking five minutes to, bo to boot. So it's that's part of the challenge we are trying to tackle and solve. Um, we have several uh, performance issues here, and we also have the challenge of uh, memory of overhead for sidecars, which is um, a huge concern for uh, when you deploy tiny microservices like functions or services with 120 megabytes of RAM. Um, and the two things we are look, looking for, which are uh, part of the technology already, um, are outbound IPs and TCP UDP support, which um, we need to uh, implement. So we are basically looking to expose way more features than we have now. Uh, in, the, in the future, we already have built-in observability um, in the platform, uh, which is going to be released this week, actually. Um, and we uh, are basically expanding right now to 25 core locations. Um, and that's going to be it for now. I, I've skipped really quickly on the, on, on the last uh, slides. Uh, thank you very much. So we are going to basically announce a public preview today of the platform. Uh, it's already available. You can sign up. Um, and that's, uh, that's all. And if, if there are questions, I'm happy to take them if I have some time.